All praises due to Allah. All praises due to Allah has blessed us with Islam. And this great, great blessing of Islam has a characteristic. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned on Anas and radiallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لكل دين خلقا وخلق الإسلام الحياء. So he says صلى الله عليه وسلم that every religion has a distinguishing characteristic and the distinction of Islam is shyness. وخلق الإسلام الحياء. The, distinct, the distinguishing characteristic of Islam is shyness. Our Prophet وسلم, was a shy person. And we'll explain what this means subsequently. But we all have a general meaning of shyness. It involves being reserved. It involves uh, not being uh, ostentatious. Not being... Uh, excessively loud in, in public or loud period in public not being uh, not drawing and calling attention to oneself so these are general meanings of shyness and shyness performs a serious function for a believer the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned Al-Imanu Bid'un Wa Sab'una Shu'aba أفضلها قول لا إله إلا الله وأدناها إماطة الأذى عن الطريق والحياء شعبة من الإيمان. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned that faith has seventy some odd branches. The best of them is to proclaim there's no god but Allah. In other words, faith itself is a branch. And the, the, so that's the best. Afdaluha qawlu la ilaha illallah. The best is to proclaim la ilaha illallah. Wa adnaha imatatul adha an at tariq. And the lowest branch is to remove the harmful thing from the path. And when we see the harmful thing, so we see a coke bottle in the street, or we see a broken branch in the street, or we see a mattress that fell off a truck. And we pull to the side of the road and remove that. That's a great act and it's a manifestation of faith. But when we do that, we should say, La ilaha illallah. And by saying, La ilaha illallah, when we remove the harmful thing from the path, we join between the, high, the most virtuous or the highest branch of faith and the lowest branch of faith. We join them together. Afdaluha qawlu la ilaha illallah. وَأَدْنَاهَا إِمَاطَةُ الْأَذَىٰ عَنْ الطَّرِيقِ So we move the thing, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And by so doing, we join between the highest branch and the lowest branch of faith. And then he said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, وَالْحَيَاءُ شُعْبَةٌ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ So some have asked, we can understand قَوْلُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ being a manifestation of faith because that's the shahada, that's how we declare our faith. And we can understand belief being involved with faith. And we can understand action being a manifestation of faith. But what about shyness, which is a characteristic? How is that a branch of faith? And the scholars, they say, Iman, Iman prevents a person from doing those things which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person has faith, if a person has faith, they drink alcohol with impunity. But a person who has faith knows it's haram. And knowing it's haram, their faith says, I'm a believer, I can't drink that. I'm a believer, I can't smoke that. I'm a believer, I can't touch that. I'm a believer, I can't do that. Their faith prevents them from doing things and even some things they might love to do. Because that was part of their habit. Maybe they converted to Islam. They were involved in a habit. They really loved that habit. But faith empowers them to leave that. I can tell you a brief story. When I was studying in Syria, every summer I would come back and forth to the States. And usually I would stop in England. 
So during one of the stopovers in the United King Kingdom in Birmingham, there was a Jamaican, a lot of Jamaicans in England and others from various islands and different places who once part of the empire. They said the sun never sat on the British Empire. Now the empire is sitting on Britain. <laughs> There's another saying, the sun never sat on the British Empire because God didn't trust the British in the dark. But <laughs> we'll leave that alone. So, there are a lot of Jamaicans in any case. So, uh, one brother, he said, I want to be Muslim. So he came to a talk I gave. He said, I want to be Muslim, but he said, I love to smoke that ganja, man. I just, I can't give up this marijuana. I love to smoke it. And I fear if I become Muslim and I still love it, then I won't be a good Muslim. I said, listen, do you believe Islam is true? Then you become a Muslim. You're looking at your power to give that up from the perspective of someone who doesn't have faith. But once you have faith, then Allah Ta'ala will give you the power to give that up. And so he took the shahada and then I left. And when I came back the next year, his brother comes running up, he's got a kufi on, looking like new money. <laughs> and, and the brother said, you know, brother, you right, man. I take the shahada. I no smoke the ganja no more. I give it up, man. I, I said, yeah, because now you're a believer. And your faith has empowered you. Your faith has empowered you. So we should look to our faith as a source of power, as a source of strength, as a source of allowing us to do the things we couldn't do when we didn't have faith. And we should always remind ourselves, I'm a believer, because that unlocks that power. That power escapes us because we forget. We become heedless. And in our heedlessness, we forget what a believer should be doing. So we have to remind ourselves, wait a minute, I'm getting ready to go for it. Wait a minute, I'm a believer. This is not a suitable course of action for a believer. And so they mentioned Hayat, shyness, which isn't a belief and which isn't a deed. So Al Imanu Kaulun Billisan Wal Amalu Bil Arkan. So faith is what one says with one's tongue as an expression of what's in one's what's in one's heart. And that's all the tongue is. If if the tongue is foul, that means the heart is foul foul. One of the airports in the Mel Kalamu Lafil Fuad wa in Lafil Fuadi wa in the ma juila juila lisanu ala ma fil Fuadi dalila. That speech is what's in the heart in the Mel Kalamu, ma fil Fuadi wa in the ma, and rather juila lisanu, the tongue has been made ala ma fil Fuadi dalila as an indication of what's in the heart. So if a person says, you know, their filth is coming out of, their t out of their mouth, that means filth is in their heart. And if a person, purity and light is coming out of their mouth, that means light is in their heart. And we should be mindful of this. We have some Muslims, we're not trying to indicate anyone, but people say they're, they're Muslims. And they get involved in the music industry. I'm not condemning that. But some Muslims get involved and say, you know, to, to get my foot in the door, I have to make this kind of music. And the music contains profanity. The music contains misogyny. The music contains denigrating other people. And then the question is, if that's what you do to get your foot in the door, what kind of house are you trying to live in? We're trying to clean up the house. And if we can't clean up the house, we're calling in the demolition crew. Mm -hmm. We need to tear it down and build a new house. That's how we should approach our reality. That should be our contribution to the neighborhood. We're here to clean up the house. And if the house is beyond cleaning, it's so dirty, we try scraping it. We, try, we even brought in a jackhammer to try to chisel it off. And it's not, we can't move it. We call in the demolition crew, and it's time to build a new house. 
And as Muslims, this is how we have to approach our reality. We have something with, and there are parameters that guide our action. And one of those parameters is shyness. So the relationship between shyness and faith. Like faith, shyness prevents a person from doing things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I, I, I shouldn't be saying, so I hold myself back. That's shyness, restraint. Shyness is fearing that one will be uh, called to task for manifesting something displeasing to the one who will call one to task. So our ultimate shyness is before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know at the end of the day, people can call us to task. And in some instances, justifiably, our parents, our friends, relatives, neighbors, teachers, elders can call us to task. But at the end of the day, we have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should be shy before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istahyu min Allahi haqqal hayat. Be shy before Allah as you rightfully should. As you rightfully should. So this is the relationship between shyness and hayatu wal iman and faith. That faith prevents us and checks our actions, prevents us from doing things that are displeasing to Allah ta'ala and shyness is a check on our action which prevents us from doing those things displeasing to Allah. Now point here, if shyness is refraining from doing those things which will call, lead us to be called to task, then there are some instances where shyness, the manifestation of shyness is to speak out. So there's a, a, a situation where the truth has to be uh, told. So if we refrain, that's not shyness, oh, should I say this, should I, uh, I don't know. That's not shyness, Shy because refraining from speaking the truth will, call us to be caught, will cause us to be called to task. So shyness would involve our speaking out. Shyness would involve our manifesting the truth because that's what the situation calls for and to do the opposite of that would make us blameworthy. There's a, a companion, his name is uh, Ashadju, Ashadju ibn al-Qais. Uh, Ashadj, the son of Qais. So he said, قَالَ لِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ فِيكَ خَلَّتَيْنِ يُحِبُّهُمَ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّهُمَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَالِ قُلْتُ He said, so there verily, uh, a shaj bin Qais, he said, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah said, verily there are in you two characteristics, إِنَّ فِيكَ خَلَّتَيْنِ that Allah loves and uh, that Allah mighty and majestic love. يُحِبُّهُمَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَالِ قَالَ قُلْتُ He said, he said, are these things that are part of my nature or are they things, qualities that I acquired? فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ بَلْ قَدِيمًا He said, rather, they are part of your nature. قُلْتُ He said, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي جَبَلَنِي عَلَى خَلَّتَيْنِ يُحِبُّهُمَا He said, all praises due to Allah who has blessed me with two characteristics that he loves. And that's an indication of his love for that person, that he blessed them with these characteristics. But the hadith conveys an important lesson to us. One, that, uh, Afwan, uh, the two characteristics, I mentioned one. al hayau al-hilmu wal haya Al-hilmu, forbearance, wal haya and shyness. Al-hilmu wal haya forbearance and shyness. And we should be forbearing people. Forbearing meaning, if, if, if bearing the abuse of people doesn't violate our right, doesn't harm us, doesn't violate the right of someone else, doesn't harm someone else, then we don't even bother with it. So someone, yeah, you're such an idiot. Well, mashallah, it's not harming us. It's not taking any right from us. So we just ignore it. That's him. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Last week someone called me an idiot and a jerk. So 
I'm getting better. <laughs> I'm improving. I Thanks. <laughs> you know, what are we going to say? You, you calling me an idiot? You know who I am? You, you know who I work for? You know who I went to school? Man, you shouldn't have called me an idiot. You know how many insults I memorized? You know how I can, I can rip you apart? You look like one of them things getting chopped up on one of those machines on late night television that you could order for $29.99. I'm going <laughs> to... No, just mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. Now, if someone's rights being violated, that's different. But someone, a little kid comes and kicks you. What are you going to do? Punch the kid? You little brat. You, did it hurt you? You know, but no one kicks me. I don't care who he is. I don't care that little runt. I'm going to squish him. I'm going to put this size 12 upside his head. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. It didn't hurt. Just, you know, you should really behave better. Where's your, where are your parents? I need to talk to them. That's him just forbearing, overlooking. And then moving on, because we have business. من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعنيه A person's Islam being good is leaving that which doesn't concern him, which doesn't concern her. And our concern is Jannah. So our concern in this life is using this body to do the things to save the soul that it contains. So it won't be tormented in the next life. That's our business. So, you know, back and forth with little petty insults, that's not our business. That's not going to help us to Jannah. You know, retaliating for every little slight, even when it doesn't harm us, that's not our business. Our business is the business of doing what we can do with this body Allah has given us to get to Jannah. That's our business. And Hayau is one of the things that we use to get to Jannah, shyness. And modesty. The Prophet وسلم, he also mentioned, إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شِتَّ If you don't feel any shyness, do whatever you want. So there's two meanings of that, two basic meanings. One is, if you're not sh uh, ashamed of what you're doing, then do whatever you want because you've lost your moral compass. You have no morality. Your heart is dead. So after that, whatever you do is not going to benefit you because the foundation for your actions is corrupt. The other meaning, though, is if you feel no shyness, do whatever you want. So if you're confident this action isn't going to call you cause you to be called to task by Allah Ta'ala, then do it. Because as a believer, you're sensitive to right and you're sensitive to wrong. We know when we're right, we know when we're wrong. No one has to tell us. When, when the books are dispensed, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَا As for one, who's given the book in his left hand. He says, whoa, that I were never given my book. And I didn't know what my reckoning will be. He already knows. We know. We're not stupid. We know that was wrong and that was wrong and that was wrong and that was wrong or, and that was wrong. Oh, woe to me that I weren't given my book and that I did not realize. We don't have to read the book. Yawm al Qiyamah. We have to read the book to know what was right and what was wrong. We need Santa Claus making his list and checking it twice to find out who's naughty or nice. We know what we've done. We know if we're naughty and we know if we're nice. Right or wrong? And so Allah Ta'ala captures that reality. Ya Layton. And I didn't realize what my record is. We know what our record is, so it behooves us to fix it now. To fix it now. We could be like, we're on a fault line. Earthquake could come right here. Bam, it's all over. The building comes down, we're gone. We don't know, it can happen quick. Look at Japan, it happened quick. 
One minute they're walking around minding their business, the next minute the whole world is upside down. Hour later, big wave comes. We don't know. It might be an earthquake. It might be a car or truck. It might be natural causes. We don't know, but we can go at any minute, any moment, not any minute, any moment. That could be it. And there's no time to fix the book. We can go back and erase things in the book now. We can erase things in the book. We have an eraser that Allah Ta'ala has given us. It's called Tawbah. It's called repentance. Erase it right out of the book. But we have to repent. We have to take advantage of the opportunity that Allah Ta'ala gives us. Uh, because when we're, we're given our book, we can't erase anything. And we know what's in it. We know what's in it now. We could go back and start erasing things. May Allah Ta'ala be merciful unto us. So Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he also relates another hadith from the Prophet sallallahu that's mentioned in the collection of Imam al-Tirmidhi. He says, قال, عن Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحياء من الإيمان والإيمان في الجنة والبذاء من الجفاء والجفاء في النار So he said that shyness is from faith and the people of faith will be in paradise يعني أهل الإيمان and the people of faith will be in paradise and uh, uh, gruffness or, or, or a disagreeable nature is from gruffness and the people of gruffness the people of of, uh, of, of crudeness will be in the hellfire and th this hadith reminds us that oh the, the previous hadith I mentioned there was a lesson that lesson is the hadith of uh, Ashaj bin Al-Qais the, the lesson of that is, number, uh, number one, that shyness can be a characteristic that a person is blessed with, and it can be acquired. This is hilm, al-hilmu bitahallum, that forbearance comes through forbearing. So if we forbear, we forbear, we forbear, that gradually impacts on our nature. And the same way with shyness. So these characteristics can be inherent and they can be acquired. And the job of Islam is to take those people who they're not inherently in them to put them in an environment where it's acquired. And that environment is the community. So a person who's out in the streets, it is hard for them to acquire shyness. It's hard to acquire forbearance. Forbearance, because if you forbear, forbear people, are, man, that dude's soft, something's wrong with him. Take his money, take his wallet, take his lunch money, take his car keys. So people think I'll be opened up to abuse. But a Muslim, man, salim al muslimun min lisani he wa yadi. The Muslim is one whom the other Muslims, uh, the Muslims are safe from their tongue or their hand. So our community is supposed to create an environment where a person can be shy and not be talked about. Where a person can be forbearing and not be talked about, but can be comfortable. There's a, a, one of the kids that went on a shooting spree a few years ago in, in, in San Diego. He said one of the reasons he snapped because everyone was picking on him because he just wanted to be peaceful. And so everyone's picking on picking and he just snapped. And when I read that, at the time I said, if only that child could have been in a real Muslim community. Where if he was shy, if he was soft spoken, he wouldn't have to worry about anyone picking on him. And if people in the community understood their religion, they'd be cultivating those and encouraging those characteristics. Not to the fault, that the person couldn't stand up and defend themselves in, in situations that call for it, but as a general characteristic to live by.
as general character characteristics to govern his relationship with other people. This is what Islam is about, community. And we have to cultivate a community of shyness where we can come together in a space like this and the brothers and sisters can be in close proximity but their shyness lowers their gaze. And their shyness creates adab. So not gawking at each other, not being openly with someone they don't know approaching, but maintaining the shyness. This is what Islam is encouraging. This is beautiful. And this impacts on society. Because people like that boy, they don't like having to be who they're not. No one likes to be who they're not. And if a person is inherently respectful of others, they don't like disrespecting others if they're in a situation that forces them to disrespect others. If they're inherently shy, they don't like to have to put up this front of bodaciousness because that's what the, situ the environment calls for. Islam is about creating an environment where people can be themselves and then refining people. To go back to this hadith, refining people so they're not people of jafat, they're not people of, of harshness, they're not people of badat or badaa, they're not people of, of, of coarseness and crudeness. This is what this society is trying to make us. Our young people are bombarded with messages that are telling them, be coarse, be crude, be uncouth. At one time, we could tell it would be an insult. Someone said, you're uncouth. Now it's a compliment. You're uncouth, man. I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> I was practicing real hard. No, we want to make it an insult again. You're uncouth, man. What I got to do? You got to become a Muslim. And you start to have to learn the adab of Islam. And so that refines us because this uncouthness, this coarseness, gruffness leads to hell. al al min al wal So people who have these characteristics are being pushed to hell. Why? Because the shyness is not there. An indication of his love for that person, that he blessed them with these characteristics. But the hadith conveys an important lesson to us. One, that uh, Afwan, uh, uh, the two characteristics, I mentioned one. al haya al-hilmu wal haya Al-hilmu, forbearance, wal haya and shine. Whom Allahu Azza wa Jal. Qultu, he said, so there are verily, uh, a Shaj bin Qais, he said, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah said, verily there are in you two characteristics, inna fika khallatayni, that Allah loves, and uh, that Allah mighty and majestic love. Yuhibbuhum Allahu azza wa jal. Qala, aqultu, he said, aqadiman kana fiya ya Rasulullah, am hadithan. He said, are these things that are part of my nature or are they things, qualities that I acquired? There's a, a companion, his name is uh, Ashadju, Ashadju ibn al-Qais. Uh, Ashadj, the son of Qais. So he said, قَالَ لِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ فِيكَ خَلَّتَيْنِ يُحِبُّهُمَ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّهُمَ اللَّهُ قَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ بَلْ قَدِيمًا He said, rather, they are part of your nature. قُلْتُ He said, الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي جَبَالَنِي عَلَى خَلَّتَيْنِ يُحِبُّهُمَا He said, all praises due to Allah who has blessed me with two characteristics that He loves. Therefore, the restraint to refrain from doing things is not there. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be those people. And that was our Prophet Sallallahu That was our Prophet Sallallahu In the battlefield, he was a warrior. But in society, he was a, the shyest, most gentle person imaginable. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so that's who the Muslim wants to be. A Muslim wants to be a person who cultivates prophetic character and then form communities that push back against communities of corruption.
And I don't mean the, the local neighborhood. I mean the people who are pulling the strings and calling the shots to introduce into the environment the things that pull people away from their nature. That pull people away from their true self. That in, instill in people ideas and concepts that are against the legacy of the prophets. This is what I'm talking about, pushing back against. May Allah bless us. In conclusion, I want to relate two sayings from two of our early predecessors. One, Wahab ibn Munabbi. Wahab, he said, who was a convert from Judaism, uh, he said, Al Imanu Uryanun. Faith is naked. Al Imanu Uryanun. Walibasuhu Taqwa. Its clothing is righteousness. Wazinatuhu al Hayau. And its jewelry is shyness. Wamaluhu al Iffa. And its wealth is self restraint. That's, that's the Muslim. That's the person of faith. A person who clothes himself or herself with piety. A person who adorns himself or herself with shyness. And a person who seeks their wealth through self-restraint. And then the saying of Al-Fudayl ibn al-Iyad, who was one of our great, great early sages. He says, Khamsun min alamat al-shiqwa. He said, five characteristics are signs of people who are on a path to hell. May Allah, if they have these characteristics, take them off of that path. Al-Qaswatu fil qalb, hardness in the heart, a hard heart. And again, this environment that's being foisted upon people is encouraging them and cultivating them hardness of heart. The Prophet ﷺ had a soft heart. He said, Al-Mu'min layyinun sahlun. A Muslim is, is gentle and easygoing. That's a believer. Is gentle, easygoing. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, al-qaswatu fil qalb, hardness of the heart. Wajumudu al-ayn, and frozen eyes. In other words, eyes that can't shed tears. And again, there's a lot of people out there that can't shed tears. We should cry for them. Because it's not their fault, they didn't come into this world not able to shed tears. But what they were exposed to, which they should not have been exposed to in a sane society. What they will have learned, which they should not have learned. The, the tools that they need to survive, which they should not have to utilize, have given their eyes the inability to shed tears. But a person of faith can shed tears. When the man came to the Prophet وسلم, said he didn't kiss his children, the Prophet وسلم, said then mercy has been taken out of your heart. The one who shows no mercy will be shown no mercy. So we want to be able to be, to be merciful, to be able to cry. Because our hearts are alive. And he said the third one, قِلَّةُ hayai, A lack of shyness. Killatul Hayat, a lack of shyness. So again, we want to try to cultivate shyness. And again, not to be pushovers, but to be people who have the ability to be restrained because there are higher principles. There's a higher system of accountability that we respect. And that's our accountability before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, وَرَغْبَةُ فِي الدُّنْيَا Longing for the world. No, we should be telling people, you might end up being poor. But you don't have to be undignified because you're poor. Because you understand this world is not the end of everything. The akhirah is. That's what's called the akhirah, what comes at the end. This world is not the end. So you might be poor, but you can be poor with dignity. You can be poor knowing that the Prophet ﷺ was poor and he loved the poor and he prayed he was resurrected amongst the poor. But his poverty did not rob him of his dignity. And if we come together as a community, we can make sure everyone has dignity. We not, might not be able to make people rich, 
But we can give people dignity. And that's what we should aspire for, brothers and sisters. To, to dignify poverty. To dignify poverty. And if we find some ways to make folks rich, that's good too. But the nature of our times, people losing their jobs left and right, the economy being restructured in a way to take people's jobs. Structural unemployment. This is a reality of our time. So we're dealing with structures of oppression, structures of inequality, structures of, of economic disenfranchisement. And until those structures can be addressed, a lot of people are going to be poor. And so Islam should not seek to be the gospel of the rich, to deceive people. You come to Islam, you'll get rich. The prophet didn't say that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to him, said, oh Rasulullah, I want to follow you. Said it a couple times. What did the prophet say to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Prepare yourself for poverty. This is the gospel of the poor. This is the gospel of the poor. And people don't want that gospel spread. People don't want, they want the gospel of, of prosperity to be preached. Why? Because when the gospel of prosperity is being preached, people will be out killing each other to get their little bit. Killing each other to control the block so they can control the trade on the block. Killing each other for the jacket or the sweater so they can make believe they have what they don't have. That's, the, that's a consequence of the gospel of prosperity being preached to poor people. They didn't want Aristide back in Haiti. Baby Doc could come back, that's fine. You no, know, 25 year dictator, tear the country apart, line your pocket with the people's money, send out the Tantan uh, Makut killing people, death squad, fine, come back baby doc. They didn't want Aristide to come back because Aristide was preaching to the people the gospel of poverty. And he said his first interview, he said, we know we can't make everyone rich but we can make poor people dignified. We can make poor people dignified. We can make poor people satisfied with who they are because their connection with Allah Ta'ala is strong. He didn't say that, I'm saying that. <laughs> because their connection with Allah is strong. Because they know they're following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Because they're content with the little they have. And contentment is the key to wealth. Contentment is the al qanaa al ghina fil qanaa Wealth is in contentment. I have a bicycle, I don't need a Lexus. The bike keeps me in shape. It's free. I can park anywhere for free. I don't have to worry about getting tickets all day, running back and forth to the meter all day. I don't contribute to the pollution and the global warming. So I like my bike. And so that person is wealthy. Because he has a bike, that's all he needs. He has his basic diet, he doesn't need ice cream. It's not good for you anyway. He doesn't need to splurge on the pizzas. He's got his brown rice, he's got his veggies, get a piece of fish once in a while, free range halal chicken once in a while. That's all he needs. He's healthy, doesn't overeat, doesn't have to count his calories. They're already counted. <laughs> He's rich. She's rich. She has dignified clothes. Three or four outfits. They're clean, neat, no rips, no tear. Got a good iron. Works real good. Steam comes out. <laughs> clothes always neat, well pressed. That's all she needs. She's rich. She doesn't need to go to Macy's every other, every week to buy the latest thing. She doesn't need a summer, winter, spring, and fall outfit. There's only two seasons in the Bay Area. Why you need four outfits? Why you need a fall outfit? There's no fall. There's winter, there's summer. That's it. Why you need a spring and a fall outfit? Because someone programmed your head, and now you think I'm poor because I can't go spring shopping. <laughs> Said there's no spring in the Bay. <laughs> لا إله إلا الله
She's rich. She's rich. That's what we have to teach the people. Because this madness will destroy us. And the fifth, Tulul Amal. So that was the fourth. Longing for the world. The fifth, Tulul Amal. Tulul Amal, a long, having long hopes, which means procrastinating doing right. So, oh, I got tomorrow. I'll, I'll go to Hajj when I'm old. I'll wear hijab when I get married. Oh, you know, I'll do this. I'll start praying five times a day when I retire because my job, it would be kind of embarrassing. I have to do zor on the job. You know, I'll do them when I get home. You might not get home. You might end up driving off the Bay Bridge. <laughs> it's happened before. It's happened before. You might be number two. You don't know if you're going to get home. The, the tragic story of the doctor. We, we were out searching for her in Oakland and think maybe some disgruntled patient uh, had, had, had killed her. The Muslim sister. It ended up in the fog, she drove off the, the dock in Alameda. She never came home that night. May Allah bless her soul. Amen. And may Allah elevate her place in Jannah. Amen. And may Allah reward her for all the service. She was loved. When, when the uh, brothers and sisters are out marching down in Fruitvale, people from the community were coming out because they loved that sister. She give you a free checkup, free medicine. But the point is she never made it home that night. We not can assume I'll do all my prayers when I get home. You might not get home. There's no guarantee. May Allah Ta'ala bless all of us to get home, to our real home. Amen. All of us to get safely home. Amen. May Allah bless all of us to return to the home of Jannah. In the Darul Akhirah. The, the home of the hereafter. That's our real home. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be content. May Allah bless us with shyness. And the real shyness that doesn't prevent us from speaking truth when the situation calls for it. From giving true witness when the situation calls for it. قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين يا قوم استغفر الله